talking for a little bit about why. You know, back even before uh, I started Facebook, uh, when I was still in college, I was studying uh, psychology and computer science, right? Because for, for a lot of us here, it's not just about building technology. It's about building technology that works the way that we do. And the first thing that you learn in, in Psychology 101 is you go through the anatomy of the, the brain, and uh, you start learning just how much our brains have evolved and how most of them is really about connecting and communicating with, uh, with other people. And so we have the language centers that you know, almost no other animal has. Uh, you have the visual cortex, where we're, we're specially dialed in to, to uh, understanding people's emotions. Right? If, if you're talking to someone and they move their, their eyebrow a millimeter or their cheek a little bit, you're going to notice because that means a completely different thing, whereas if something moves over there, you're probably not even going to pay attention. Um, we have our, our mirror neurons that when we're interacting with another person, we understand uh, what's going on in them and inside of us. So we experience the world through this feeling of, of, of presence and the interactions that we get with other people, which is why Facebook's technology vision has always been about putting people at the center of your computing experience. And we've mostly done that so far uh, through building apps. And I, I don't think it's an accident uh, that a lot of the, the top used and, and biggest apps that are out there are, are social experiences that put people at the center of the experience, because that's how, that's how we process things. But you know, there's only so much that you can do with apps right? without also uh, shaping and, and improving the underlying platform. And I, I find it shocking that we're here in 2019 and our phones and our computers are still organized around apps and tasks and not people and the, the things that we're actually there present with. So you know, I feel like we can help all of us together deliver a unique contribution to this field uh, by helping to ensure that the next platform changes this. And you know, the defining aspect of augmented and virtual reality is that they deliver this sense of presence, or that no other technology platform before has ever delivered. And you feel like you're right there with another person or, or in another place. And now, sure, we, we have a lot of work to do before we're going to get to that perfect form factor that we all want. But you can already see glimpses today of how the devices that we're all working on are helping to deliver a feeling where we are more present uh, with the people that we're interacting with there, uh, not less like a lot of the other platforms that are out there today. So longer term, and I think that this is going to add up to, to a lot of really big changes. We're going to be able to live uh, anywhere that we want and be able to feel like we're present with the, the people and the jobs and opportunities that we want to have access to anywhere we want. Um, so that's why I'm so excited about this. And I, I know that, that a lot of you are, are working on this because you're excited about similar things. And it's, um, it's awesome to be on this journey together. So now, in order to do this, we need to build a, 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 we need to do a couple of things. The first is we need to build a lot of technology that's going to help advance and deliver this feeling of presence. The second thing that we need to do is build an ecosystem of, of, of all the experiences that, that, that need to be delivered here. So, on the ecosystem side, the first step uh, that we need to reach is reaching critical mass in the community. And once we get to a certain size in the community, it's going to become economical for all developers, uh, from, from the independent folks to, uh, up to the, the, the biggest uh, AAA developers that are out there to build content for VR. And once we reach that point, the amount of content is just going to explode, and that's going to push adoption further. So, in getting there, Quest is off to a, a great start. Uh, it's only been on sale for about four months now, and we are selling them as fast as we can make them. But even, <laughs> but, but even so, even more importantly, though, is that retention is is good, right? So people are using it week after week after week, which is a great signal for how the content ecosystem is getting stronger, and VR is becoming something that more people are stepping in and out of on a day-to-day -day basis, rather than this kind of one-off special experience that you need all this different equipment for and you need to dedicate a whole room in your house to. So these are all really good signs. And to get to critical mass, uh, we're focused on building forward compatibility into all the new devices that we build so that all the content that you're, that you're all making just works across everything now and, and going forward. So the, the, the goal is that if, if, uh, if you develop something for Quest today, then our goal is to make it work on all future Quests as well. And that means that when you buy a Quest, uh, that you're not just buying something that's going to be locked in time. 
uh, that as all the new content is built for the future, it's going to get better. And also, as we deliver major software updates, uh, your, the platform is also just going to dramatically improve. And that's going to be a big theme of what we want to talk about today. But of course, you know, the, the biggest part of this depends on all the awesome stuff that you're building. So we need to build an ecosystem that supports all of you, uh, which is why I am proud to share the news uh, that as of today, people have bought more than $100 million of content in the Oculus Store. And And since Quest came out just uh, several months ago, more than 20% of that is from Quest already and growing really quickly. So I just want to take a moment at the start of this conference uh, to thank all of you who are really the ones who are pushing this ecosystem and community forward. So thank you, guys. All right, so the experiences that you're all building for Rift um, are as good as it gets in VR. But right now, uh, when you build something for Rift, it, you know, that library of content isn't available to people who are on Quest. So you know, we've been looking at what we can do here. And we want to, uh, so the first thing that, that we want to announce today is, um, is we've been looking at how we can make this possible. Um, so we're, we've made a major software update, uh, and we have a new product that we're calling Oculus Link that is going to make it so that if you have a gaming PC and a USB-C cable, you're now going to be able to run all the Rift content on your Quest. So this means that starting in November, when we ship this update, your quest is basically a Rift Now 2. <laughs> so, now this is going to work with, with most USB-C cables that are out there. Uh, so you, know, you don't have to buy ours, but, but we've also designed a dedicated cable that's going to maximize the, the throughput here. It's going to charge your quest uh, if your PC supports that too. And, and it's long enough that it makes sure that you, you, it provides you with uh, with maximum flexibility and freedom of movement. Uh, but you're, so you're going to want to check this out. We're, we're shipping it in, in November, and, and we're really excited to get this out there. So that's one major software update that we wanted to talk about. Uh, but I, I want to move on to another one that's about to make your quest a lot better, too. So a, a lot of the technologies that we're working on here um, are, are foundational, N not just for, for virtual reality, but also uh, for the future of what we want to do with augmented reality, too. And one of the really foundational things that, that we feel like we, we want to improve and make a lot better is input. Because in the future, you're going to be able to interact with digital objects with your hands, or just as naturally as you can with physical objects in, in, in the world. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you remember the first time that you, you tried out touch controllers, right? And how awesome it was. You were just able to you know, look down in, in virtual reality and reach out and grab something or throw it and do something with it. And, um, it really just added this whole element to, to the experience. But as soon as we made that possible, it immediately opened up this bigger question, which is, OK, how can we do even better? How can we make it so that instead of having to use hand controllers, we can just use our hands? And I am excited to announce that early next year, we're launching hand tracking on Quest. <laughs> All right, want to see it? Let's, let's check this out. <laughs> means no controllers, no buttons, no straps, no external sensors, uh, just full range of motion in your hands. And you know, even if you've spent a lot of time in VR and you've spent a lot of time with touch controllers, uh, I think that the first time that you get a chance to experience this and you just wiggle your fingers and you, you see that, that full range of motion in your hands, it's, it takes the experience to a whole new level. And um, you're going to get a chance to try this out on the demo floor after the keynote today. So I'm really excited to, to, to get this into all of your hands. So you know, this is what I mean when, when I talk about building a platform that improves over time. Right? Six months ago, if you wanted to get into VR, 
you needed a, a PC, cables, sensors, hand controllers, and a half a dozen physical objects. And you know, now, soon, it's just going to be you know, a headset. Uh, that you can bring with you anywhere that you go that is full inside out track and completely wireless, and now your hands are just going to be there too. So you know, there's a lot of work that we still need to do to get to where uh, we all want, but I think what you're starting to see is the hardware is getting out of the way. And with each step, uh, we're getting to a more immersive and, and natural experience. All right, so now I, I want to talk about the future of input for a minute, though. Because hand tracking is great. It doesn't require controllers, but it, but it still requires you to use your hands. Um, and in the future, we want to get to an input uh, where we can just think something, and it, and it happens. So what, what, what people call a, a neural interface. And um, you know, earlier this week, we announced that the Control Labs team uh, will be joining us. And you know, they're the leading team working on neural interfaces. They have a lot of the best researchers, uh, computational neuroscientists, and more. And you know, they're working on a wristband. right? And it, and it picks up electrical impulses that are sent through your nervous system and turns them into digital signals that you can use to, as input um, in virtual and augmented reality. And it's, it's completely non-invasive. right? So there's no surgery, no implants. You don't have to get holes drilled in your head. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a wristband. And um, so it gives you the sensation of being able to interact uh, with digital objects just by thinking. And you know, this is clearly early. right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a number of years before this gets into any of the products that we're shipping. Uh, but it works. And you know, they have a, a dev kit uh, that they're shipping already now. Um, and now that the Control Labs team is going to be joining our Facebook Reality Labs team that works on, on augmented and virtual reality, um, we're going to invest and make sure that this is a foundational part of the input for the next computing platform. And I'm, I'm really excited about this one, so I, I just wanted to talk about it for, for a few minutes today. All right, so the, the last thing that I want to talk about uh, up front today is delivering a social experience in, in VR. Right, so you know, I talked about for, for a while how our, our technology vision is putting people at the center of the computing experience. And you know, a big part of how we do this is by building technology that advances uh, the, the feeling of presence, right? So more immersive, um, getting the hardware out of the way, um, you know, better and natural, more UI, uh, better, more realistic avatars, which we'll talk about later. Uh, so that's one part of it. The other part is, is basically building the software experiences that put people at the center of the experience. And you know, that's kind of our bread and butter as a company, right? We, we build a lot of uh, the best social experiences for phones and for computers, and we want to do this in, in virtual reality as well. So great social experiences usually aren't just a place where you interact. Right? They, they give you the ability to define uh, the space around you. And we, so we've been working on something that, that, that does this in, in virtual reality. It's, a, it's kind of a virtual reality take on this. Um, and we've been working on this for a while, and today uh, we want to announce an experience that we've been working on called Horizon. And in Horizon, uh, you are going to be able to build your own worlds and experiences. Uh, you're going to be able to play games. You're going to be able to explore. You're going to be able to uh, hang out with your friends and, of course, meet new people. And uh, because everyone is going to be able to create uh, their own spaces and experiences within it, Horizon is going to have this property where it just grows and expands and gets better and better over time as we focus on building this out um, for many years to come. So you, know, you don't need to be able to code in order to create something, although that, that can certainly help in building some of the, the more advanced things. Um, you don't need to take off your headset in order to make something. You can make some really neat stuff in just a couple of hours if you want, and then invite your friends in and, and have experiences and hang out with them right there. Um, so this is also this is early, uh, but this is another step towards building the kind of social infrastructure that we believe is going to be important in the future. So you should be able to hang out with your friends, uh, you know, join groups, uh, create events, share ideas uh, in VR, just like you can online. And of course, now you're going to be able to do it with that added uh, feeling of presence, like you're right there with the people uh, who you're talking about that no other technology platform that has existed before delivers. So we are launching this next year. Uh, we're putting the finishing touches on it now, and, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you all do with it. So.